Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity that God has given me to come and share with you the Word of God today on this Saturday. Praise God, this rainy Saturday, October the 2nd, I believe it is. Praise God. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God, declaring once again that Jesus Christ is the answer to all of our problems. It doesn't matter how large, how small, or how difficult, how complex it may be. Praise God. My Bible tells me there's nothing too hard for the Lord, but all things are possible to them that believe. And all of our faith can stand a little bit boosting. Amen. You know, the disciples said, Lord, we believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. That means our faith is not what it should be. And I think all of us are in that category. So we can say, Lord, help us, Lord. Give us more faith that we can trust you and believe in your word. Praise God. But I do have a word. I have a word from the Lord for you today on this Saturday. Praise God. And uh, actually, we finish it up. This is part three. We gave you a little space. We did part one and part two of this message uh, right together. So we gave you a little space before we come back with three, uh, the concluding message here. Uh, let's look at Romans 8 again. Romans 8, 14 through 17. And again, look with me. Praise God. Jot down the scripture. Write them down. And then later on, you can go back and you can kind of, uh, some people call it marinate them. Just kind of look at them closely and let God speak to you about what thus said the Lord. Romans 8, it says in that 14th verse, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, it says they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. No, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And he says in that verse 16 verse, The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And if we're children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Let us pray. Father, bless you today. Lord, thank you for this, another opportunity to share your word. I pray now, Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit attendance that he might come, Lord, and speak through me. And then, Lord, speak to the ears and the hearts of those that are listening to this broadcast. And, Lord God, we'll be mindful to give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now, that 17th verse is where we took our subject from. And we're going to do it again in this concluding message here. 17th verse Paul said, if we are children of God, now that's an if, if we are children of God, then we are heirs. Mm, we got a fortune, inherit a, a great fortune there. We're heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him. Very key phrase there. Well, it's, it's where we're going to concentrate on this last uh, message here in the series. He said, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. We are heirs of God. We're joint heirs of Christ. That is, if we are willing to suffer with him. Praise God. And that's our subject. Our subject, uh, again, is we are heirs of God with Christ. Heirs of God with Christ. Part three, this is who we are. This is who God say we are if we are willing to suffer with him. Amen. Praise God. But this is our final message this evening. And I, and I, want, I want you to concentrate uh, upon that, uh, that verse 17 there because this is what the meat of our message is today. Praise God. If so be that we suffer with him. Concentrate upon that because that is the qualification. That's the clause in our contract with God. We got to be willing to suffer with him. And praise God, the opportunity is abound today to suffer with him because Christianity is under fire today. Praise God, all over the world. And who would have thought, even here in this country, the United States, Praise God. Christianity is under attack now. But let me again begin by saying that every son 
of God, every daughter of God, praise God, has a cross to bear. You got a cross that you have to carry. Every son of God, none of, no exemptions here. Our, our cross may come, it may come in many ways. Now, it can come in just plain old troubles in our lives or trials. Or it could be just afflictions that comes upon us. Praise God. And, and then there's our, our trials that, that come from the world, out of the world. And then, then come from our own flesh. Hmm? Trials come that way. Troubles come that way. And then that's the old devil himself. Praise God, who's stalking us day and night. Praise God, to try to make it hard for us to carry out our mission. But now our trials may come in, 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 in many different forms. Praise God. Sometimes we, it, our feelings are hurt. Praise God. A lot of people say they feel they get hurt often because of their stand for Christ. And sometimes it'll come from your loved ones, your friends, your kin folks. We see a lot of that today during this COVID epidemic here. We got kin folks turning against kin folks here. And so, especially today, and uh, uh, Christians are being treated real bad, mean, treated mean and cruel. Praise God. Cruel things, cruel things are being said, said about us today. Praise God. And they, they, they slander our character today and insinuate that we're just a bunch of hypocrites. The church is just full of hypocrites, they said. Huh? Pretending that they're Christian. That's what a lot of people say. And, and worse, uh, uh, and all, all, all these things they say uh, about us. And sometimes these things can, can hurt us. Hmm? And then there's those trials that come from our heart. Inside our heart, which Paul describes as our own personal thorn in that flesh. Amen. Uh, I, I'll call it our resident devil, the in-house devil that lives inside of us. Jeremiah 17, 9 uh, points to it. He says the heart, in that heart, our heart, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Praise God. Only God. Only God knows our heart. But some of us now, as sons of God, daughters of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, some of us are called upon to suffer. Some more some less. Hmm? We have a calling. God put a calling upon our lives sometime to suffer. Amen. To suffer one way or the other. Praise God. But now, as the wise great physician, our wise great physician, uh, uh, as he, he uh, that's what he is. He's a wise God. Amen. And he sometimes, he, he, if, he, if he allow suffering to come, he measured it out to us. He don't put no more on you than you can bear. That's the word of God. And we believe that. He measured out to each one of us individually the type of suffering, the amount of suffering that we are to endure. Praise God. God, uh, he kind of measured out. Praise God. But one thing is sure. One thing you can be very sure of today. Praise God. There never was, never will be a son of God and a daughter of God who enter into heaven without a cross, without having have carried their cross. None exempt. Praise God. Amen. Hebrews 12, 6 and 8. Hebrews 12, 6 and 8. Look there for, uh, for a minute there. Uh, uh, Paul says there, for whom the Lord loved it, he chastened it, and he scourged every son whom he received it. Then he asked, he said now in verse 7, there, if you endure chastening, God deal it with you as with a son or daughter. But what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, all of God's children, yes. Then if you without it, though, you are a bastard, the Bible says, and you are not a son. Amen. God has no sons and daughters that does not go through the crucible, the cross, carry the cross, the burden of the cross. Acts 14 and 22, uh, says that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Huh? Guaranteed. Amen. And then Paul in 2 Timothy 3, 12 says, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, will suffer persecution. Huh? If we are attempting to live this Christian life, in this anti-Christian atmosphere, 
that we live in today, then you will suffer persecution. Amen. That's guaranteed there. Now, if you're not suffering any, it's probably because you are, might not be a child of God. Amen. If Beware, the Bible says, when all men speak well of you. I'm talking about the believers now. When everybody like you, you know, you're just a ball of fun, aren't you? No? Well, the Bible says beware. Because uh, that's not the stand position. Uh, the uh, uh, That's not what's going, going to come forth to the true believers. Now, praise God. But the Bible, though, the Bible teaches that suffering is is designed by God to make the sons of God, the daughters of God, uh, to be partakers of his holiness. He wants us to be holy. The Bible said God is holy. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. So now sufferings are designed by God to bring us into that holiness, to wean us away from the love of the world, the love of the things of the world. Praise God, suffering, it, it does a good job of that. And if it was if it was good enough for our Lord, now if suffering was good enough for him, praise God, surely it's good enough for the children of God. Amen. Praise God. And by the way, it has been said, um, I think, I, I, I don't know who said it a long time ago. I read uh, some minister said something like, well, there, there's no cares. There's no real cares in the believer's life. Usually you're going to find that there are very few prayers in their life. If they have no real cares, I mean, things that are, are really got you really praying about it constantly. If you're not into something like that, then you, you know, it, no cares, no prayers. That's what he said a long time ago. But now Hebrews 2, if we look at Hebrews 2 and 10, Hebrews 2 and 10, it says, for it became him of whom of all, are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their Salvation perfect through suffering. Hmm? Captain, that's Christ now. And, and then the Hebrews 12, 10 says, For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Talking about our regular parents. You know, they whipped us sometimes for a little no reason. But now he said, But he for our prophet, if God chastised you, if God allowed you to go through something that's in the, in the category of suffering, uh, then it's for our prophet. It's for our prophet that we might be partakers, Paul says, of his holiness. That's where we're headed to, holiness, being like our God. But now the captain of our salvation was made perfect. How? Paul said through suffering. Christ was able to accomplish his mission through suffering. And that's the way we uh, accomplish our mission or prepare ourselves for the mission. Now, in this, in the, in, 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 in our text here, uh, it says that suffering, there, there are four evidences here of, 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 of suffering here that seems to solidify our sonship. Four evidence, our sonship and our heirship. I call it heirship there. Okay, that's good enough. But now that's in Romans 8 there, our text that we began with. In Romans 8, 14 through 17 gave us four evidences. Uh, that uh, 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 of suffering uh, 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 that uh, solidify our relationship with the Lord. And that first one was in that verse 14, that we are led by the Spirit. First of all, a true child of God are led by the Spirit. Hmm? That's number one. These are the evidence. Hmm? Suffering is one of them, but these, these are all four of them right here, being led by the Spirit. Number 15, verse 15, it says that uh, uh, the spirit of adoption is within us. We know we're children of God. We don't even wonder about it. Praise God. We know who we are. Praise God. Thank God. But then that third, that third evidence, praise God, is the witness of the spirit, he says. And that's verse 16, Romans 8, 16. And he says, we have the witness of the spirit in our spirit. These are evidence here. And then that last one was the suffering. Verse 17, we got the, su the suffering of the saints is evidence. And that's what we're dealing with on this last uh, message here, suffering. The suffering of the saints. If you're not suffering for uh, Christ's namesake or uh, for being a believer standing firm on the word of God, if you're not really suffering, then you ought to check your 
Christianity or your relationship with God, you need to look at it real good. Amen. Praise God. Not that you, you know, a lot of people uh, want to call evidence of my salvation the fact that, praise God, I've been baptized. You hear that all day, all the time. I was baptized in Jesus' name with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, that is not the evidence that makes you a child of God. That is not the evidence there. Amen? Not even if, well, I pay my tithes in church and I take communion and I participate in all the programs in the church. Well, none of these things make you a son of God, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Christ. None of these things. Amen? Praise God. You have to Praise God. You have to qualify according to the word of God. Praise God. But now, if we are to share in his glory in heaven, we must first of all share in his suffering. Very plainly. Hmm? Right here in this life. Not by and by. Not after a while. Not over there. But in this life, we have to share in his suffering if we're going to share in the glory. Hmm? Matthew 5, 11 and 12, Matthew 5, 11 and 12, Christ said, blessed are ye when men shall revile you. Mm, I'm blessed. That insult you. Oh, we get a lot of that today, don't we? Those Christians, those Christians, huh? when they insult, revile you or persecute you, Christ said, and shall say all manner of evil against you, falsely, of course, for my sake. Look at verse 12. He said, rejoice when it happened, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm. And surely that day has come. Praise God. It's here now when believers persecuted. We're accused of everything. We're accused of uh, uh, the reason why this uh, COVID outbreak has lingered on so long. Why? Because those devilish Christians talking about they got a conviction. Hmm? Oh, yeah, we're accused of that. Huh? We're accused of denying the woman her right to kill her baby even in seven months. Well, that probably eight months now, and the baby's fully formed. And just because the Christian people don't go along with it, Oh, boy, we are the villains, aren't we? We're no longer the good guys. Hmm? We're the villains now. But remember now, remember the words of our Lord. Remember the words of our Lord here. He said, you are blessed when you are reviled, insulted, when they, ins when they, when they persecute us, when they falsely accuse us. Christ said, rejoice, you're blessed. And I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed because I get enough of those insults. Amen? John 15 and 18, John 15, 18, 20. Christ says, if the world hates you, watch it now, listen to me, listen at him now. If the world hates you, know that it hated me, Christ says, before it hated you. Amen. He says in that verse number 19, if you were of the world, the world would love you. Hey, they would love us. If we thought just like everybody else, if we thought like the majority of the politicians in Washington, D.C., oh, boy, they would love us. And if they, if they love you, you better check yourself out. Amen? Praise God. Well, that's the majority. majority. I'm with the majority. Well, ain't, ain't no, never a majority in Christianity has done anything. God has always worked with a few people. Amen? Pray Christ said that if you are of the world, the world would love you. But because you are not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Look at verse 20 there. He said, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. That's what Christ said. Huh? If they have persecuted me, and they did, didn't they? Didn't they persecute Christ? He said, they will also persecute you. So what is it you expected? Count the cost, brothers and sisters. If they have kept my sayings, which they didn't, Christ said, then they're going to keep yours. But they didn't keep his. So they don't care what we say. Hmm? They think we're a bunch of loonies. Amen. But now John 16, 33, what Christ says there. Christ said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, in me, in me, in me, you in me, I in you, in me, you might have peace. Peace come through Christ being in us. He said, in the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have conquered it. I have overcome the world. And thank God, his victory is my victory. 
Hmm? He overcame the world in order that I might overcome the world. Well, Pastor, you said, Pastor, now you know you ain't, you ain't all that. Well, but now what he means is this. Christ called those things that be not as though they were. That's what the Bible says. He calls things that be not as though they were. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. But beware. Beware, brothers and sisters. Beware. You that say you are Christian, brothers and sisters. Beware now. Beware of those preachers whose message are always, God want to bless you. God want to bless you. God got a special blessing. I'm a positive thinking preacher. Beware of those messages now. Hmm? That's not the whole gospel. That's not the whole gospel. Huh? They never mention the suffering, do they? Never. Don't mention that, do they? That we must endure. We must go through. If we are to be heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Hmm? But most of these preachers today, their messages are designed to make people feel good. Oh, God's going to bless you. Hmm? Feel good about themselves uh, with a, a great expectation of, of, of great health and wealth and happiness forever. Oh, boy, that's their message. These are not uh, God's ministers. No, they're not. That's not the word of God. Huh? A half-truth is a whole lie. Amen. They are, these are not God's ministers. They are of their father, the devil. Hmm. What Jesus says about them. But now, it's through our suffering. For his name's sake. Now, for his name's sake. It's through, his, through, through our suffering, for his name's sake, that our fellowship with him and our joy increases. Hmm? That's the only way to increase your faith and your joy is through suffering. Paul said that I might know him. Praise God in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know him, but you can't know him completely unless you enter into his suffering. Praise God. It's through his suffering. Suffering in our suffering, that is, in his name, that we our fellowship increases, our relationship increases, our joy increases, our faith increases, only through suffering. There's no other avenue. There's no other way. Amen. Acts 5. Look at Acts 5 there. Go, let's look at Acts 5, 40 there. It says in uh, Acts 5, 40, it says, And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. Hmm? 41 said, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Oh, the brothers were happy. They were happy because the signs of their apostleship, the signs of their being uh, the heir of God as John Edwards Christ is that they suffered and they did. But so they rejoiced because the signs of suffering was there in their ministry. Hmm? And they were willing to suffer shame for the name of the Lord. The bottom line here is, the bottom line, if you do not suffer in this world because of your faith in Christ, in some measure now, if you don't suffer in some measure, whether it's from the kinfolk, on the job, here, there, wherever, you may not. You just may not be a son of God. You may not be a daughter of the Lord. Praise God. You check it out. You look at yourself now. When the Lord... Um, called Paul to salvation. You remember Saul called him to salvation. Uh, God spoke words about him, and, and those words uh, can be applied to every believer, every believer in Christ. Those words that were spoken to Ananias about Saul, Paul, what were those words that have spoken then? Well, uh, let's look at, uh, look at, look at uh, Galatians there. Good. Look at well, no, no. Go to Acts, Acts nine. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm skipping ahead here. Go to Acts nine fifteen. Acts 9 and 15. What was the words that were spoken concerning uh, Saul that can be applied to every believer today? Hmm? Acts 9, 15, 16. But the Lord said unto Ananias, Go thy way. He, how about Saul now? He's a chosen vessel unto me. I've chosen him. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And then at verse 16, listen, there it is. And I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name. Hmm? And that wasn't just for Ananias. That's every true believer. If you stand firm, get off the fence, don't straddle the fence, 
Don't try to make everybody like you, but just speak God's word in love. You're not going to be like. You're not going to be like. The, 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 the Bible said they hated Christ without a cause. And some of you probably don't. You don't like me. Why you don't like me? You don't even know why you don't like me. Mm, it's something inside of you that said, I don't want that word of God. Oh, yes, it is. Praise God. But it's important that we understand why Christ had to suffer, though. Why did Christ have to suffer? Why do believers have to suffer also? It's important that we understand that. Praise God. But it's in order to secure for his people, God's chosen people, a perfect righteousness. What is righteousness? A right standing with God. A right standing with God. And to justify his people from their from their sins. That's why he had to suffer. And also he was honoring the law of God, which we we dishonored. Adam and Eve, our parents did. They dishonored it in the beginning. Praise God. And sad to say, we still dishonoring God's word today. Oh yes, this is my body. The women said, it's my body. I do what I want to. And God said, you belong to him. But you say you belong to yourself. Oh, boy. So we're still doing it today. Amen. We're still doing it today. But Christ had to suffer, though. Under the law, he, as a man, he had to become a human being and get under the same strict law that God gave to, to man. Huh? Just like I said. And, 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 and he rendered to this law perfect obedience. Christ lived in this world, walked in this life. And he did not sin. The Bible saying him was no sin. He rendered perfect obedience to our great God. Amen. And guess what? His obedience is my obedience. Now, you're trying to say you're you perfect, aren't you, Pastor? No, I didn't say that. Huh? I just say he called things that be not as though they were. It's because I'm in him and he's in me. My faith give me that standing before God. Perfect obedience. Amen. Galatians 4.4. 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the same strict laws that God gave to man from the beginning. Huh? Christ came to redeem those who were under the law that couldn't keep it. That's me and you, couldn't keep it. He redeemed us, huh? that we might receive the adoption of son. That's one of those signs. Mm, that you are a true child of God. I've been adopted into the family of God. I'm no less than anybody else. Huh? I'm no less than the Jews. The Jews are no more, they have no more standing with God than I have. Praise God. I have been adopted into the family of God. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Let's look at that. Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Christ says here, though it said, though he was, Paul said, though he was a son, talk about Christ now, yet learn he obedience. He learned obedience. How did he do it? By the things which he suffered. There it is. He learned. See, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hmm? God wants us to be obedient today for, as believers. Well, how do you how do you how do you how do you learn to be obedient just like he did? By the things which he suffered. And nine said, and being made perfect, he was made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation. Unto all them that believe and obey him. All that obey him. He become the author of our salvation. Now, just as the son learned obedience by the thing which he suffered in this world. And he know he suffered. You know, we know the treatment that he went through. That uh, the abuse, the misuse, the verbal and the physical abuse that Christ went through. Amen. Praise God. So every believer will learn obedience by the same method. Same method. Huh? Praise God. Been ostracized, criticized, set aside, and beat aside. All kind of everything here in this life. Amen? See, Christ took upon himself the nature of those given unto him by the Father. Yes, he did. In order to make us righteous. Hmm? Both in a judicial, judicial sense by 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 carrying out the mandates of God's justice, and then through the Holy Spirit. Praise God, the Holy Spirit living in us. The, the witness within us has made us partakers of his divine nature. I am a partaker of God's divine nature. Romans 5, 19 says, for, it says, for as by one man's disobedience, talking about Adam, many were made sinners. Who the many? Me and you. 
Everything, everybody born after Adam, through Adam and Eve, are made sinners. So by the obedience of one, uh, who's this other one here? That's Christ. Shall many be made righteous. Look at that, look at that again. Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were classified as sinners. So again, by the obedience of one man, Christ, shall many be made righteous. What is righteous? A right standing before God. God sees us as being right with him, not based upon our own rightness, but upon the one who came and he became righteous for me and you. It's a gift from God. Oh, God, you, 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 you just can't keep on resisting this great guilt. Praise God. It's because the Christ is obedient, that the believers are accepted. By the will of, accepted by the Father, and we're made heirs of God, and we're made joint heirs with Christ, sons of God, daughters of God. Praise God. And that obedience include him assuming our body. He took on a body. Christ had to take on a body, living in a perfect, I mean, living perfectly in obedience to his Father. He did. Praise God. Under every requirement of the law, he didn't break one. He never sinned. In him was no sin. And he carried out the requirements of the law, and then he went to the cross. Why did he have to go to the cross? Well, because God had said, the soul that sinned, it shall die. We had death on us. Mm -hmm. And it's still on many of you right now because you won't accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, you resist it. You ain't ready for the change. He went all the way to the cross. He had to not only uh, carry out a perfect life, but he had to go and suffer the death on the cross because that was the penalty that was against me and you. Hmm? Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Right? He says here, Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself no reputation. Oh, he took upon him the form of a servant, he says here, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. Hmm? Praise God, when he came out the womb and with a body, praise God, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Look at John 10, John 10, 17, 18. The Lord, he said, therefore doth my father, the Lord said, therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life. I lay down my life voluntarily. He volunteered. He willingly laid down his life that I might take it up again. He said, no man take it from me. Hmm? No man killed Christ. And a lot of people say, did anybody kill him? He allowed this to happen. No man take it from me. He said, I lay it down my life for myself. I lay it down. I got power, Christ said, to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. I'll resurrect this body again. This commandment have I received of my father. You see, all the things that we experience in this life, Christ has already experienced them. Hmm? Every one of them. Every one of them. And because he knew no sin, praise God, or he did not commit any sin at all, his suffering, it had to be more intense than ours because we, we, are, we have sinned. His suffering, our little suffering down here, we, we, we really deserve it. We really deserve it. But he did not deserve it. Hmm? But when he suffered, though, his reply was most always, it is written. Huh? When the ones closest to him betrayed him, which I believe is the greatest kind of suffering, when people close to you, hmm? praise God, people close to you, hmm? and that hurts a whole lot. And his disciples, praise God, when they uh, resisted him and many began to cry out, crucify him, crucify him, praise God. When they did this, Hmm? His only words were, praise God, is written. Or is the John 13, 18, look what he said there. He said, all these things are happening to me, uh, all this suffering I'm going through, that the scripture might be fulfilled. John 13, 18. Now Christ said, I got to fulfill the word of God. Hmm? He that eateth bread with me, Christ says there in that verse, has lifted up his heels with me. My own familiar friends, my friends, they'll turn against me. But it is written, though. 
the scripture is going to be fulfilled. I, I said in the Old Testament that my friends would turn against me. And yours will too. Huh? If you're a true child of God and they are not saved, give it up, brothers. Huh? Give it up. They're going to turn against you. There's no doubt about that. They may not understand why they're turning against you, but they're going to turn against you. Hmm? Because you're different. Because you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Amen. And that makes a big difference. And, and, and the garden against him. You remember when you was in there? Huh? Those whom he loved. Oh, his, his beloved disciples. Peter, James, and John. Turned their back on him in the moment of his humiliation. Went to sleep. The brother went to sleep on him. Praise God. And he got to face that cross on the next day, the same day there. Listen to, listen to Christ as he cries out in agony in that garden of Gethsemane. Listen, Matthew 26 and 38. Boy, I tell you, it says there, being in agony, he prayed more honestly. Christ prayed while the brothers were sleeping. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. That's intense. Pressure. Hmm? Praise God. But they deserted him. He was all alone. Hmm? But the Bible said he had to tread the wine press alone, though. Praise God. And again, as we close on this message here, let me say again, no child of God is going to be without suffering hmm? in this life. Hmm? And, and suffering is the evidence of our Father's love for us. As many as I love, I'll chasten now. That's the evidence. It's not enough. To know this in your mind, huh? That you got to suffer. Now, it ain't enough to know that. See it on the in, in the Bible and read it and say, "We well, are." I see it. You got to experience it. You got to experience it. You got to have people turn against you, your loved ones. Praise God, the people that you've been hobnobbing with all your life, they will drop you like a hot potato. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Psalm one nineteen and sixty seven. Uh, 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 they, the psalmist said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept that word. Before I was afflicted, before the trials come, I went astray. But when the trials came in my life, I began to keep God's word because the word of God is true. Psalmist said in 1975, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. In faithfulness. It's for my good. It's for my good. You know, mama used to say it a long time ago. I'm whipping you. It's for your good. I didn't believe a word of that. But now I believe the Lord. The Lord said it's for your good. Praise God. It is through our suffering that we learn obedience. Learn obedience. And obedience is the character. It's the character of the heirs of God and the, son and, and the joint heirs of Christ. This is our character. First Peter 1 Peter 1.14 said, As obedient children. There it is now. Obedience. Not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, he says, but as he which is called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of your conversation. My lifestyle has to change. If you're saved, yours will change, and you will be kicked to the curb by ones that you thought were your best friends. And, and, and actually, they don't know why they don't like you no more. Mm. But if we're part of the Christ, and if we are positioning ourselves to be heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, then like Christ now, we must yield ourselves to the Father. Yield to the will of the Father without question now. Totally surrendering our will, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And I mean even unto death. Oh, boy. And it's looking close now like in America. Praise God. Some of them said they're getting camps ready uh, uh, for the believers today. Uh, they're going to get rid of us because we're standing in the way of progress in this country. Oh, boy, what a laugh. 2 Corinthians 5, 1. Hmm? Paul says, therefore, we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made by hands, but a house that is eternal is in heaven. No obeying God. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you dearly. I want you to know you're going to suffer. It's going to cost you dearly. You see it happening right now. Hmm? Right now. Hmm? But remember, it's going to be for the glory of the Lord. Praise God. 1 Peter 2, 19, 19 through 24. Listen to that Peter there. For this is thanks word that he said. If a man for conscience taught God, conscience taught God, endure grief, suffering wrongfully, 
Oh boy, my conscience tell me that I shouldn't do this, God. I can't do this. Well, they don't want to hear that, do they? Huh? Look at verse 20. He said, what glory is it if when you be buffeted or persecuted for your faults, you take it patiently. But if when you do well and you suffer because of you doing good and you take it patiently, then this is acceptable with God. Verse 21, for even unto, uh, here unto were you called, he said. We were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us a what? Example. That we should follow in his steps. Who did no sin, the Bible said. Verse 22 there. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Hmm? Who, when he was reviled, no God, look at no God. He, he said what he mean, he meant what he said. One, two faces at all. Just told you straight out, praise God. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body, on the tree, on that piece of wood, on that cross, that we being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness. What is righteousness, my brother? I got a right standing with God. I can stand righteously before him because of Christ. It says, by whose stripes we are healed. We are healed of that sin that has been controlled in our lives. But now, as we suffer down here, for I will stand for truth. And that's what is happening right now. We're standing for truth. Hmm? We're standing for truth and righteousness. Just remember, it can never come close. Our suffering can never come close to what our Savior had to endure down here. Keep that in mind. Praise God. On our behalf, our suffering is a light affliction. The Bible says it's just a light affliction compared to what Christ went through on that cross. Father, we bless you today. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Once again, Lord, to share your word with your people. Now, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit might now speak to the hearts of the listeners, I pray, Father God, that your word will not return void. But Lord, that person that you ordain from the foundation of the world, hear your word. I pray by your spirit, Lord, you'll speak to their hearts right now. Show them that Jesus Christ is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you haven't accepted Christ today, I say to you, today is the day of salvation. The moment you hear my voice, Christ says, harden not your heart. Today is your day. Accept Christ. Repent of your sin and ask Christ to come into your heart today. And praise God, and he will, and he will, and he will, because he say he will. Amen. Praise God. If you like this video, go over and hit that like button over there. And then, praise God, uh, go back over and hit that subscribe button. And when we come again, and we will, if God's will, if God ain't through with me, he'll give me something else to say. He don't ever fail to give me something to share with you. Praise God. And again, we're also, I want you to know that you can find our podcast on the Facebook, on YouTube, on Sermon Audio. That's where the book of our podcasts are. Over Almost 500 podcasts by various ministers in our churches. And uh, you can tune in just just to just uh, Pastor James Dansby uh, and uh, Sermon Audio. Pastor James Dansby Sermon Audio. And you'll see a list of messages, good word that will help you to grow in the Lord. Praise God. So God bless you. May God keep you until we come again. Amen and praise God.